Oh, recently somebody asked me, Zach, how did you get into Mortal Kombat and why are you so passionate about it? And as I was typing away, I got about five paragraphs in and realized that this would probably be a better way to explain it. So I'm gonna take a moment to tell you about my history with Mortal Kombat, also known as my conquest. So when I was a young tyke, around five, six years old, I went over to a babysitter's house one evening and she had a Nintendo 64. She popped in a fighting game for us to play and her and I played together for a little bit before her boyfriend dragged her off. And so I just sat there at the TV playing alone for what felt like all night. I was fixated. The blood, the fighting, and I didn't really know how to do fatalities, but there was always one scene that stuck in my mind. And then eventually, I went home, never playing that game again, but realizing I had never actually known what that game we were playing was. That is, until I was about 17, when I learned that that game was indeed Mortal Kombat 4. And that was about it for a few years, until I was 13, 14. I was sitting at home, having done my homework, watching random ScrewAttack Top 10 lists, as we did at the time. During this, one of the videos I saw was titled, Top 10 Worst Mortal Kombat Fatalities. I didn't really know what Mortal Kombat was, and it was featuring Stuttering Craig and good old Nervous Nick. I watched the video and instantly I wanted to see more. So I went to their channel and watched every single Mortal Kombat related video they had. Along the way I discovered my favorite character, Johnny Cage, who I actually thought was a bad guy at first because he was cocky, fought dirty, and he wore blue. Whereas the guy that I knew was the main character was an honorable monk who wore red. So in my brain, red, blue. After Screw Attack was done, I continued to research Mortal Kombat, watching story breakdowns, let's plays, and of course every fatality compilation that I could find. Eventually leading me to research was there any Mortal Kombat games on the Xbox 360, the only console I had at the time? And the, you know what the only Mortal Kombat game on the Xbox 360 was at the time? MK vs. DCU. So I begged my mom to buy the game for me, doing extra chores and doing my best to convince her that it wasn't too violent for me despite her internet research. I finally got the game and let me tell you, I loved every second of it. I played both sides of the story mode on the same night, I played the arcade mode with pretty much every single character, I tried the combo challenges, I played the story again, I loved that game so frickin' much. And by the time I was about done with it, lucky me, the next Mortal Kombat game was getting ready to release, being Mortal Kombat 9. Since my mom had seen how tame MK vs. DCU's violence was, she had no problem taking me to the midnight release of MK9. Remember midnight releases? Now it's just you download the game and wait for the timer to run out and then hope you can play it once it hits zero. I brought that game home and played the story mode until 5 o'clock in the morning when I eventually passed out in the living room. And I enjoyed it even more than DCU. I played the living hell out of it constantly. Arcade mode, test your luck, I beat the 300 tower. I was loving the game until this happened. <laughs> New Cyber wins. My dad, who had been in the room for the first time and actually been seeing me play it, saw this happen and exclaimed, Emily's slightly paraphrasing here, what the f*** is this? Absolutely not and he made me take the game and go return it to GameStop. I was heartbroken, but not deterred. My love of Mortal Kombat would not be extinguished that easily. I waited for a few weeks, and then I bought the only other Mortal Kombat game that I could play at the time, being MK Armageddon on the Wii. You see, in the intervening time between MK vs. DCU and then, my dad had won a Wii at a raffle at his work. This Wii, to be precise. And I knew that there was one Mortal Kombat game on that machine, and it was Armageddon. And since it looked so different from MK9, my dad had no idea it was the same franchise he'd been mad at, so I was able to kind of fly under the radar. Now, any MVK veteran out there will tell you just how painful MK Armageddon on the Wii was, but I didn't care. It was Mortal Kombat, and that's what was important. I put dozens of hours into that game, unlocked every piece of clothing for the creative fighter, every secondary costume, and I still couldn't really do the motion control fatalities. Time skip a bit, and Mortal Kombat X had just come out, and guess who has two thumbs? And I just turned 18. This guy. So I could buy and play whatever the hell that I wanted. So now that, combined with the Chomp Suey trailer, I was peeing my pants excited for the next installment of Mortal Kombat. Except there was one little issue. I didn't have an Xbox One. I was broke, working part-time for my dad, and still finishing high school. I did not have Xbox One money, but I did have a lifeline. Being my future sister-in-law's brother, was in the military and he had an Xbox One. So I was able to go and beg him to let me borrow it before he got redeployed, which he did. So I took that thing and set it up in the office that my family rented on Wi-Fi. And after attending the midnight release of MKX, I brought it back to said office, popped the disc in and the install began. And it went and it went and it went and I was pacing. I was cleaning up the office. I was snacking on my snacks. 
I tried doing the thing where you play it when it's partially installed, but that didn't work. It almost never worked. After over an hour, we're close to 2 a.m. at this point, the installation finally finished and I began playing. Despite being 2 a.m., I sat my fat ass in a beanbag chair and blew my way through that story mode in one sitting. Wrapping up the story mode around 7 a.m., pilled around the crypt for a while before passing out on the couch in the front room, my level of Mortal Kombat had never been stronger. In addition, my creative writing bug had never been stronger because I felt, and still feel, that MKX had the best storytelling of any Mortal Kombat game. I really loved the setting, the characters, the story progression. It genuinely kind of inspired me. Also, it crossed over with one of my other favorite franchises, which made me love the game even more, with Jason Voorhees. Through so much, MKX was the final nail in the frame that built my love of Mortal Kombat. Fast forward again, Mortal Kombat 11 is spinning up. I was hyped up, I had my own Xbox now, I was following every combat cast, I was reading articles, I was watching every trailer. This was gonna be great. Mortal Kombat 11 came out April of 2019, and what also happened in April of 2019 was my dad was diagnosed with throat cancer. At the time, we lived in a little town called Saratoga, Wyoming. I was working with my dad, but I had my own apartment. I had my physical copy of MK11 pre-ordered in a town an hour away. In order for my dad to get the treatment he needed, they needed to move down to the Salt Valley in Utah, and I moved along with them to be support, and because the only thing keeping me in Saratoga was working for my dad, so I moved. The day we rolled into Salt Lake City was April 23rd. We dumped all of our stuff in my brother's garage, and I drove my beat-up old 1999 POS Audi down to the local GameStop they had called and transferred my pre-order to a week before, and I got my copy. And I did once again commit to plowing through the entire story mode in the first night, and being able to just kind of submerge myself in that game and forget the world around me was exactly what I needed at the time. The distraction that I embraced in my brother's spare bedroom to keep me distracted from the fact that my dad was looking death in the face 15 feet away through me through a wall. The story does have a happy ending, however, because my dad was thankfully able to make a full recovery, and he is now cancer-free, beating its ass. The only lasting effect that he's had from it is he can't really do spicy food anymore, so hey. MK Aftermath came out like a year later. It was fun. Nothing significant happened at that point in time. Fast forward again to 2022. We as a community are expecting an announcement for the next Mortal Kombat game any day now, or at the time we thought it was going to be an Injustice game. Now I decided that I wanted to start my own podcast about Mortal Kombat called Enter the Nether Realm, just for fun. I wrote up a couple topics, recorded a few episodes, and it was cringe. After about 10 episodes, I ran out of time and started running out of ideas, so I put that thing on hiatus and figured I'll come back to it eventually. Then, May 10th, 2023, less than a week after my birthday, the It Is Almost Time video came out. Mortal Kombat 1 had been teased, and I was so excited I blew the dust off of Enter the Nether Realm, and I made a video about it. And the rest, as they say, is history. Thanks for listening.